as we have been discussing we are uh, introducing the quantum corrections to the uh, <coughs> properties of electron gas uh, in a solid and uh, so the first thing that we uh, we have just shown is that uh, the <coughs> specific heat for example which had a uh, problem uh, uh, because the, the classical theory did not uh, meet the experimental results uh, this has been corrected by introducing Pauli exclusion principle and quantum statistics and a back sort of a, an approximate calculation settled the matter the two most important factors the linearity in temperature at low temperatures uh, and the factor of nearly 100 or more that uh, the actual experimental result gives a value less than the uh, classical value and the both these accounts were settled by an approximate calculation and a very physical calculation also gives similar kind of results. Now, <coughs> and the both of these these basically uh, use quantum statistics by quantum statistics I mean the statistics that is uh, for Dirac statistics appropriate for electron gas. Now, <coughs> As I said the, uh, the calculation that I just shown uh, gives me a factor uh, gives me all the factors correctly except by the that it is only uh, uh, linear in temperature term is uh, what we, we could get. Now, if you want to go beyond that and want to get the numerical factors and the corrections to T square uh, all that uh, correctly then you have to account for the for the fact that the chemical potential itself is a function of temperature uh, at zero temperature only it is equal to the Fermi level Fermi energy and uh, we, so that correction has to be put in and the fact that Fermi uh, function itself does not give you a delta function like derivative at E f uh, should also be corrected. So, it, uh, so what uh, Sommerfeld did was that he took this, this general kind of uh, integrals where you have to solve this d some function h of e times the Fermi function f of e. <coughs> the condition is that this h of e has to vanish at uh, epsilon uh, at energy is going to minus infinity. Uh, of course, that is true of almost all physical functions and there is also the other conditions that at uh, very large energies it has to be uh, less than some powers in, in epsilon. Uh, so, it can at best uh, uh, diverge at uh, some powers of uh, energy. So, those are conditions that are more or less uh, uh, <coughs> obeyed by most of the physical quantities that we, we, we encounter and so that, that condition is not a prohibitively difficult or restrictive condition for a physical system. Now, let us define this quantity basically it is the h is now defined as a derivative of another function which is k and uh, <coughs> so one can integrate it uh, by parts and remember the fact that uh, h uh, vanishes at the boundaries uh, and uh, <coughs> so uh, the, this fun the, the this integral will now give me uh, this h of e f e d integral is just the the second term in the integral which is minus k e del f del e that minus is now taken inside as I wrote the as I showed in the previous one that uh, the advantage of uh, at zero temperature the advantage we have is that the Fermi function f versus e at e f uh, at e f uh, the derivative has uh, this derivative has a delta function kind of structure the negative direction. So, minus del f del f del f del e is a very sharply picked function across around the Fermi, Fermi level and it is an even function. So, this is very important that you can actually calculate and uh, take the derivative and see that check that it is an even function with respect to e that means, if e goes to minus e the function the derivative does not change. So, these two facts are going to be used. <coughs> so, so, this integral can be written as, as this right hand side k e times minus del f del e into d. Now, k e is expanded in a Taylor series uh, <coughs> and this 
about uh, the the chemical potential okay so this uh, this is the standard chemical the t taylor series expansion okay so so let's go ahead and see what we do next so this integral now can be rewritten in terms of this integral first part up to mu which came from the first term uh, remember the this term is k of mu only it's a constant term so that that will give me this term and because this is h is dk d e remember so this integral will give me only uh, h at mu uh, k at mu remember that's what i should get okay. <coughs> the the other terms are important now now you see that uh, this in this other terms this this part uh, what has been uh, retained is only the even even powers uh, of epsilon minus mu to the power 2 n 2 to the power n into 2 so 2 n because the odd powers all vanish because as i said that uh, derivative remember the derivative uh, is a this derivative this the derivative is of uh, fermi function is an even function so i can only i will even into odd over the entire uh, minus infinity to plus infinity if you sum will give you 0 and that is exactly what has been used here only the even terms have been retained <coughs> which is just written below only even powers are retained because del f del e is an even function of epsilon minus mu. Okay, so, finally, you can uh, uh, <coughs> substitute this quant so this is just a substitution you do here this one sorry epsilon minus mu by k b t is uh, substituted by x. So, that then becomes a, an integral where you can term by term uh, start integrating and that is what uh, uh, is being shown here. Uh, these, uh, these are the coefficients these integrals are not yet done, but this is an integral remember this quantity x is a dimensionless quantity. So, whenever you have a, a quantity of this kind uh, integral these are dimensionless integrals. So, that is that finally, leads to a, a so the temperature dependence comes out and the the final result that one gets is a result of this kind. So, this is the so called Sommerfeld expansion which is uh, sorry. Uh, this look at this result. So, this result for example, this gives me minus infinity to mu h e d e and then there are these corrections. These corrections are the order of order t square this this second term for example, which is k b t whole square into pi square by 6 into h prime of mu. So, this uh, so, this if you now uh, use this this Sommerfeld uh, expansion to our problem which is the calculation of uh, specific heat uh, <coughs> uh, of, a, of an electron gas degenerate electron gas then uh, you will basically get this kind of a result. Uh, so, the final result uh, as I said when t is not equal to 0 remember this this second equation n equal to 0 to mu g d plus whatever it is. Uh, can be used to find the uh, value of mu also in terms of n. It is often inverted to find uh, mu in terms of n and it is correct to order t square. <coughs> so, so, finally, if you do all that and carry on doing, uh, doing the calculation as shown here, this integral you can uh, this is up to E f plus the correction the first correction to E f uh, mu minus E f term. Uh, so, that that has been incorporated and if you do it you can finally, get these expressions for both u and n. <coughs> As you can see they are still of the order of 2 order t square beyond t square terms are not included. <coughs> So, finally, you can actually make a correction uh, make the, the correction for the chemical potentials temperature dependence chemical potential comes out to, to be 
of this one. So, remember C at 0 temperature this is still E f, but there are corrections which are of order T square. So, order T linear in T there is no correction to the uh, specific heat uh, to the chemical potential and uh, beyond that the first correction appears to order T square in the chemi in the chemical potential as a function of temperature. <coughs> And it is very very small actually, even at room temperature it is uh, less than 0.01 percent. So, that is that is the reason the correction to chemical potentials are generally ignored in most calculations where you do not require extremely precise uh, results. And that is that is why the linear in temperature dependence uh, and the use of mu as E, e f uh, in the, the approximate calculations that we did. Uh, give us reasonably good results and uh, the factor of uh, the, the T square dependence and the numerical corrections are uh, far less than the this uh, first term that we al already got. <coughs> but nevertheless for this is a, uh, it's a, it's a historically important uh, scheme of things where you can systematically go and calculate. Uh, higher order temperature dependencies. <coughs> so, finally, the fact the, the result that you get for specific heat is uh, this from Sommerfeld correction, this is the first term and uh, this term uh, uh, <coughs> see you have to take a derivative of this and this this will give you the, the first uh, temperature dependent correction which is linear in T. So, as you can see that this uh, is very very close to uh, what I what our approximate calculation uh, gave us. <coughs> and again uh, if you can if you put this uh, this uh, free electron value g of E f equal to 3 by 2 3 n by 2 E f uh, per unit volume uh, here the small n is n by v. So, that will give you this this final this boxed in red. Uh, value of the specific heat in terms of uh, the ratio k b t by E f which again I said uh, takes care of the factor of 100 that we needed from the classical value. Remember the classical value is just 3 by 2 n k b and so you have a factor 100 one, one of 1 over 100 sitting here and uh, that that is exactly what we got from our uh, uh, previous calculation as well. But the advantage here is that in using these expansions you can go to higher order and calculate the corrections to chemical potential uh, by temperature as well <coughs> to order T square. You can actually go beyond that by retaining higher terms in the expansion, but then they become more and more complicated and <coughs> cannot be handled analytically at all. So, that is the precise scheme of things that Sommerfeld uh, adopted and he obtained these results uh, correct to order uh, T and then T square also. <coughs> okay. So, let, let us now go over to a topic which is uh, uh, fairly important for what we are going to do from now on okay. <coughs> and that topic is uh, the topic of uh, bonding in solids and eventually the formation of a band. <coughs> now, to do that uh, what uh, I will start doing is to just pretend that I have a solid of two hydrogen atoms. Now, this is of course, a highly embellished version of a real solid. A real solid has 10 to the power 23 atoms and many electrons in the in each atom and then of course, many orbitals to accommodate them, but uh, as, I, as I will demonstrate a very simple calculation of formation of a for example, a hydrogen molecule starting from two hydrogen atoms which are far separated initially and brought close together. This kind of an approach gives you the basic idea that runs behind the formation of bands. And there are many ways one can calculate these kind of things. There are many approximations. The simplest one is uh, called the uh, linear combination of atomic orbitals, and that, uh, in the context of band structure, uh, can be 
uh, it's termed as uh, tight binding approximation and uh, that's the simplest one that one actually does in most of the solids of course uh, <coughs> if you have uh, uh, bands a large number of uh, orbitals involved uh, then of course you have to do a full full blown calculation which we will uh, come back later but for the moment uh, we will just discuss the fact that uh, when two protons with the two electrons in, hyd in hydrogen atoms come close together they form a hydrogen molecule and why should they form it and and then carry on that uh, that idea the physical understanding thereof to the formation of bands in a uh, solid of very large number of atoms ok. So, let us uh, just start uh, thinking about uh, <coughs> two hydrogen atoms. So, for example, if I have a proton here and electron around it, another proton somewhere here and an electron around it. Now, these are of course, confined uh, they are confined within their orbitals. So, if you can replace these two as a just to make a physical idea, uh, let us first start with a, with replacing these uh, these two electrons which are here, they may be in any direction in spins. May <coughs> so, these two electrons uh, are confined in a region of uh, say Bohr orbit. So, we can think of uh, writing them just as a particle in an infinitely deep box here and here for example, this this problem uh, is solved everywhere in quantum mechanics books, it is a first problem you solve more or less. So, that is why uh, I just want to uh, bring out the physics of formation of a molecule, why should a molecule form for example. Now, we all know how to solve this problem, we can write the Schrodinger equation and we can then uh, calculate the energies and so on and so forth, it is very straightforward. So, for example, minus L by 2 to plus L by 2 and it, the electron is uh, because this is infinite potential the electron will be confined within the walls when the potential is 0 inside. So, the we know also that the wave function will look like this, it has to vanish at the boundaries right. Uh, you will have this uh, electron here. Sorry. So let's put these electrons here and here. We also can calculate the energy of these electrons trivially, very straightforward because I know that this this is the lower ground state wave function. So, that means lambda by 2 has to be equal to L right. Now, <coughs> k is 2 pi by lambda. So, h cross square k square. So, this is 2 pi by 2 L. So, this is pi by L h cross square k square by twice m is h cross square by twice m pi square by L square. So, this is the energy of the ground state, the lowest uh, state at, uh, at each of these infinite potential box. So, uh, <coughs> and this we have you have done in your class many times. The now the question is uh, E, so, the two electrons uh, their energy is E g plus E g equal to uh, h cross square by m pi square by L square. Okay. So, this is now the, the total energy of the system of two protons, two uh, electrons with their parent protons uh, in the in my blemished version of the of the 
theory it is uh, two electrons confined in infinitely deep potential electron deep potentials okay so particles in a box so two such par particles in a box problems i added their energies because they don't contact each other they don't see each other there is no connection between these two so the total energy is this now the question is what happens if i bring one close to the other if one approaches the other so let's see what uh, uh, we we get so now once uh, they start coming closer of course, the actual um, uh, hydrogen atom the potential is not infinite. So, the electron is uh, is in a finite potential. So, there is some leak of the wave function beyond beyond this and there will be some overlap between these uh, wave functions. These pro nuclei that are sitting here, here and here they will also start talking to the other electrons so, and then to themselves. So, there is a uh, mixing that takes this called mixing. So, this is uh, these two uh, wave functions of the two electrons are now going to uh, mix and uh, so in the eventual uh, scenario when a molecule is formed then uh, what one uh, has is basically a you can mimic it by a these were both L by 2 from minus L by 2. Now, I have minus L to plus L and both the electrons are in, in the in under the influence of the two nuclei which are sitting be, uh, below they are pretty close now. So, I am forming a molecule trying to form a molecule. So, it is a two nuclei and then uh, the two electrons will now go to this this lowest ground state of the uh, molecule. Now, if I think of this again as a as an infinite potential problem then I know the energy of this uh, this uh, system uh, so the energy is uh, E g now is pi square uh, h cross square by twice m pi square by 2 l square right. Remember the the energy that we got was uh, uh, pi square by the length the total length square h cross square by twice m into pi square by total length square. Now, I will have the same thing here h cross square by twice m into pi square h cross square by twice m into pi square by the 2 l square which is h cross square by twice m pi square by 4 l square. Now, both the electrons are in the same orbital now. <coughs> so, this orbital uh, total energy is total energy is basically just 2 times this energy which is h cross square by m into pi square by 4 l square. So, now you can see that uh, compared to the previous one where I had <coughs> where our energy was uh, h cross square by m into pi square by l square. Now, we have uh, the energy which is uh, h cross square by m into pi square by 4 l square. So, the energy has gone down uh, compared to the Two, two independent uh, atoms uh, sitting far apart from each other. So, that means the formation of a molecule when these two electrons start uh, talking to each other is the most appropriate solution for this problem because you reduce the energy. Uh, of course, this argument has uh, two interesting aspects which I do not know if you have noticed. One is that this when I had uh, electrons here they could be in any direction in spin. This could be up, this could be down or, or this could be down, this could be up and so on. right? So, this uh, or both could be up, both could be down in their respective boxes when they were not talking. But when they start talking and they come to the same orbital, now you do not have that choice. Okay? 
So, what has happened is that uh, the eventual molecular orbit the this is called the molecular orbital in this orbital the both the electrons are, are are to be put and Pauli exclusion principle tells us that you cannot have up and up or down and down kind of states you can only have up down states or down up the, the electrons are indistinguishable. So, up down is the same as down up. So, <coughs> This, elect, uh, this system is now a spin singlet, it has no net moment whereas, here uh, in the when they were not talking to each other they could be in any any possible states because they are completely different spins right. So, they could be both half means uh, the, the total moment you will find is uh, 1, both down total moment you will find minus 1, total moment is 1, the projection is minus 1 and so on and so forth. Uh, up down will be 0 and down up will also be 0, but here there is only one choice that you have to put the electrons. So, the, the moment of the electrons now are not to be seen, it is in a singlet state. Uh, <coughs> the other interesting thing is that supposing I was uh, not dealing with hydrogen, but say helium, helium has two electrons and two protons of course, and uh, <coughs> then uh, of course, I, I could still do the same calculation, but now I had uh, these two electrons in these boxes. So, I have to put in four electrons, then of course, I have to go to the to the next uh, higher energy state and uh, which is uh, which the wave function looks like this and the energy is uh, somewhere here. So, this is the lo lower energy E g but now I have to put two electrons uh, in this this orbital. And uh, so, these are all filled up all four electrons had to be so, this is the E excited let me write it with red. So, the if you, you can uh, calculate the total energies and you will find that the there is not much of a gain. So, this this means that uh, this kind of treatment that I am doing is, uh, rest is restrictive, it is uh, uh, two helium atoms forming a molecule is completely different scenario that, uh, that, that this theory will never give you that. And uh, so, the you have to remember that this is true for uh, situations where you I have uh, less than fully filled orbitals to deal with. For uh, other cases, we will we'll take care of them, them separately, but this is just a caveat. I wanted to you to rem remember that uh, for helium, this kind of treatment will not give me the uh, lowering of energy that I was looking for in a molecule. <coughs> so, the, the point that I am trying to make is that if you have to separate energy levels uh, of two, uh, two, uh, two uh, electrons sitting here. And if you bring them close uh, start approaching each other then of course, you will mix them these orbitals there is an interaction uh, coming from their uh, nuclei and uh, they also interact with each other this 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 uh, right nuclei will interact nucleus will interact with the left electron and vice versa. And so, there is a say Hamiltonian that you have to write which involves terms which are the kinetic energies of each of the electrons the, and then they are, they are the terms which are the interaction between the nuclei of the two electrons and of course, finally, the electron electron interaction and the nucleus nucleus interaction. So, all that has to be written down and then one can start making approximation and uh, the the idea that we got from the previous calculation is that eventually you will get uh, states which are one is below this state the two two energies and the other is above these states and you can now put two electrons in this state and gain energy. Uh, whereas, if you have to have if you have more electrons you had to put it in the upper orbital and then you do not get, get much energy. Uh, this this kind of a scenario which I will discuss in my next class uh, by writing down the Hamiltonian is, uh, is very common in uh, in chemistry 
and these are called uh, bonding and anti bonding molecular orbitals. So, you can see already that uh, there are now uh, I started with two orbitals, I got two orbitals, but there is a lowering in, in energy because I could put two electrons in the uh, bonding orbital which is the lower energy orbital and that leads to formation of molecules and eventually if you increase the number of sites number of uh, such uh, atoms to a uh, very large number then of course, you will get a band formation where you will have all sorts all, all the orbitals in coming in between uh, these all the uh, wave functions from each of these atoms will come within these, these range and there will be 10 to the power 23 orbitals uh, states within this, uh, this range uh, between the bonding and the anti bonding orbital and you will have a, a so called band formation. So, that is what I will come in come to in my next class. Thank you.